everyone. I'm Maddie Barber. I'm the Special Projects Editor at TCG Media. And I'm joined today by Daniel Bainbridge, who is the Regional Manager UK and Europe for Malaysia Airlines. Hi, Dan. Welcome. Hi. Hello, everybody. So just before the UK's second national coronavirus lockdown be began this month, I was lucky enough to be invited to Heathrow by Malaysia Airlines to take a look at the new health and safety measures that the airline has put in place to ensure its passengers are kept safe while traveling during the pandemic. So during this webinar, I'm going to be asking Dan to share the information he relayed to me at the airport once again, so that you as travel agents can be fully informed and prepped to reassure any clients who may be cautious about flying with Malaysia Airlines at the moment. I'm also going to be asking Dan for additional information that will be helpful to you when selling Malaysia Airlines, such as route updates, fare options and details of onboard dining. We have a couple of videos to show you as well, um, which should help you visualise what travelling with the carrier looks like right now. So, so I'm going to start with the booking process. Um, the refund debacle earlier this year means clients are incredibly cautious of which travel companies they're spending their hard-earned holiday funds with these days. Now, I know Malaysia Airlines has taken steps to reassure customers that their money is safe with you, um, with the Economy Flex, flex fare. Uh, will you please explain to agents exactly what the benefits of this fare are? Yes, of course. Thank you, Maddie. So we, we understand how important it is during these extremely challenging times that customers feel an element of, of reassurance and certainty. And with borders remaining closed and really huge amounts of uncertainty going forward, to give customers the confidence to part with their money, to get them to press that button and to book is really, really important. So what we did is we introduced a new Fair Families back in June this year in reaction to that and gave customers a, 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 a choice. Um, so we have a, a fully flex fare, which is all bells, all whistles, fully refundable, changeable without a fee for absolute peace of mind. And that starts at just a 68 pound supplement to our regular fares, in, including baggage. And for that extra supplement, they can use priority check-in, priority baggage, as well as having all of the benefits of full refund and full flexibility. So when you're selling that to a customer, you can give them that full reassurance that their money is safe and they're a full, full refund. So if they book now for next year and borders are closed or they change their mind or for any reason whatsoever, um, the travel trade can be very confident that they can offer a full refund, which, which we know is really, really important. Okay, great. Um, and so I was going to ask about roughly what budget um, would, would clients need to be looking would need to have to book economy flex is that kind of the 65 pound supplement on top of the standard economy fare yeah so we have we have three fair families we have economy light which is our hand baggage only option and economy basic which is just a modest supplement on top of the um, economy light and then the economy flex and the economy flex um, at the moment is around 68 pounds supplement on the the basic fare and it comes with all of those benefits obviously if customers are looking for just the cheapest possible fare then we do have a price point there, which is which is appropriate. Um, however, since introducing the fares, the um, the growth that we have seen in the popularity of the Flex product is really where the majority of, of customers are, are looking to book. Um, and certainly the feedback we've had from agents is that it's a much easier sale because of the flexibility that, that offers. Okay, great. And so moving on to what passengers have to do after they've booked, but before they board a Malaysia Airlines flight, um, are there any tests that passengers need to pass before they cross the threshold onto the plane? And um, are you testing a, a crew members? Do they have any, um, are they have to do any tests in the same way? So at, at, the, at present, no. And these um, regulations obviously change as we, as, as the situation evolves. So as, as, as we are today, there's no requirement for customers to have a negative test to board a Malaysia Airlines aircraft. Um, the key um, processes that we go through, obviously, are, uh, um, are temperature checks prior to boarding. And if anybody does have symptoms or is um, doesn't pass the temperature check, they're not they're not permitted to board. Um, but we will obviously abide by all of the international regulations um, and testing. And if Heathrow, for example, or the UK government was introduced a, a testing regime, we would of course um, implement that and, and abide by that. Uh, arrival into Malaysia is a little bit different at the moment and many of the markets that we serve are, are effectively closed to foreign nationals. So arriving into Malaysia right now, there's a 14 day compulsory quarantine, um, but foreign nationals generally are not allowed in with, with unless under certain exceptions. So the market is predominantly Malaysian nationals. Transit is still permitted into Kuala Lumpur, 
so customers can still transit in Kuala Lumpur to onward destinations such as Australia, Malaysia, Bali, Indonesia, etc. However, entry into those countries is still subject to the entry restrictions of those particular nations. And I think in, in terms of your question of the, of, of the crew, um, you know, the crew are very, very carefully looked after. There are no specific um, testing regime per se um, that, that the crew go under. But obviously, if that was to become, um, uh, you know, enforced by the Malaysian government, for example, or overseas governments, we would obviously abide by all, all of those conditions. Okay, great. And do you, you mentioned you do, you're doing temperature checks um, before boarding. Do you think that's an effective way of assessing passengers and crew members? Um, or do you have any plans in the pipeline to require travellers to have a negative COVID test before stepping on board? So, I mean, listen, a, a temperature check is, is one um, way that you can help um, reduce or, or minimise the risk. It, it's not 100% and it's not 100% foolproof. But any, any efforts that you are going through to help give an element of reassurance to customers um, is absolutely key. Um, and at the moment, there's not a requirement for, for, for testing. Uh, you know, if that is, if that is adopted later, a requirement later, then, then we will do so. I mean, obviously, we're hearing at the moment some very positive developments around vaccines um, at present. So that is, that's very, very encouraging news and helps to give confidence for, for future travel. So we, we look forward to, cautiously look forward to more um, news in that particular area at the moment. Yeah, of course. And um, I know the Malaysia Airlines fleet has some very clever aircraft technology that um, helps keep the air on board clean and sanitary. Um, will you just talk a little bit about what the about the filters um, and what they do on board? Yes, this 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 is this is a, a a word you know you'll increasingly hear in aviation and travel circles is the HEPA filters. Mm -hmm. HEPA filters are high efficiency particulate absorbing filters um, and these are installed on, on the Malaysia Airlines aircraft and we have the most modern variant of those which is the most efficient and these effectively remove 99.97% of all particulates on board and effectively through those filters the cabin air is replenished every two to three minutes completely in the aircraft so you know for people who may potentially be concerned about being on a, a long-haul aircraft for sort of 12 13 hours actually the air filtration systems on board are very 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 effective um, and have been compared to that of hospital operating theaters and certainly the air filtration is far more effective than you know visiting your your local grocery store um, or any uh, you know alternative sort of indoor environment um, so it's the, the, the air on board an aircraft really is very, very highly filtered and people should feel very reassured that that is, you know, as, as safe as that can be in that regard. Okay, great. Thanks. And um, now I, th I think you're going to have a pretty lengthy answer to my next question because I've seen firsthand, you know, the extensive effort that's gone into keeping passengers safe while in the air. Um, but what COVID-19 prevention measures have been taken to ensure passengers aren't exposed to coronavirus on, on the planes? Well, Maddie, yeah, it, was, it was great to have you on board and to see our safety protocols at, at first hand. And there's a range of measures that, that we are undertaking. And this, this is particular focus really on Heathrow departures. So first of all, we strongly encourage completely contactless check-in. So before customers arrive to the airport, we recommend checking in via the app or via, the, um, or, or, or via online check-in so that when they get to the airport, there's no contact that's required. All of our staff are wearing um, uh, face masks. So if you do need to go to a check-in desk to check in a bag, you'll be um, required to wear a face mask. There, there are temperature checks there to check that everything is all right in that regard. And as you'll have seen at, at Heathrow, there are um, extraordinary measures in Heathrow in terms of regular sanitizing stations and the airport is kept in incredibly clean. Um, so the passenger's journey through the airport is very, very safe in terms of social distancing on seating, regular sanitizing and cleansing, et cetera. When it comes to boarding the aircraft again, we have socially distanced seating when waiting to board. There'll be another temperature check by staff in, um, who, who, who are fully masked. Passengers are required to wear masks for boarding and on board the aircraft at all times, except when eating. Each aircraft goes through a, a very deep cleanse after every flight. So a, a deep disinfectant will mist, will um, fog the entire aircraft and particular attention is paid to any surfaces which are high touch. So seat trays, 
handles, remote controls, IFE, um, bathrooms, etc., cetera, um, to give as much deep cleaning as possible and reassurance to, to customers. And then when it comes to the cabin crew themselves, they um, wear PPE to serve, which you'll have seen demonstrated on the board, and I think you'll be able to see on some of the um, video footage that we've got. We're wearing goggles to serve, a, a full protective covering and gloves for the meal service. Um, so you'll be able to have reassurance that um, you know food is prepared in the cleanest possible manner um, and, and, be, and be confident on board. So uh, you know a, a high range of measures we provide an onboard hygiene kit with face masks and hand sanit sanitizing wipes, again, to give additional reassurance to customers while they are on board, um, which, is, which is all very, very helpful. Okay, great. And how long do you expect these measures to be in place for? I mean, do, do you envisage Malaysia Airlines keeping some of these measures after the pandemic? At, at, the, at the present time, we have no um, immediate timeline to remove them and these remain in place for the foreseeable future um, and I think as we've probably seen you know the, as long as this virus is around travel and the world has changed and we are uh, you know adapting to that as, as best we can um, and so having hygiene and safety kits is something that I think customers will see as increasingly important and reassuring when they are traveling so there, there are no plans to remove them they are in place for the foreseeable future. Okay great. And now we have a very short video to show, um, which is gonna visualize all these measures um, and more that Malaysia Airlines have put in place recently. When going on a trip, the first thing you'll need to do is check in online before leaving home. Remember to pack your hand sanitizer, passport, and face masks. You'll need to arrive at least four hours prior to departure. And don't forget to wear a face mask. Make sure you pack enough for your trip. Next, walk through thermal scanners to get your temperature checked. Airport surfaces are clean and sanitized regularly. Follow the instructions and print your baggage tag. Head to the baggage drop-off counter to verify your passport and drop your baggage. Reveal your face for passport verification. Reveal your face to the camera at immigration. There will be no body contact during screening, just the use of handheld screening devices. Face masks must always be worn in the golden lounge. Get your temperature checked. Scan the QR code for contactless registration. Sanitize your hands. To order food, just scan the QR code and make an order. For drinks, head to the beverage counter to make an order. Collect your meal when it's ready. For reading material, sign in to the Wi-Fi and you may download the Going Places magazine and the Temptations duty-free catalogue as no physical reading material will be made available. Social distancing will also be maintained in the Golden Lounge. Do arrive at least one hour prior to departure at the boarding gate. Go through security screening. Present your documents for verification and get your temperature checked before entering. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Present your passport and scan your boarding pass. Cabin crew are dressed in safety gear and ready to serve you. In-flight magazines have been removed for safety reasons. For your safety, our aircraft are installed with HEPA filters, which trap 99.97% of dust particles, airborne viruses and bacteria. 
Do wear your mask at all times during the flight except when you need to eat or drink. Meals are pre-packed for easy and hygienic consumption. The lavatories are periodically clean. Aircraft are disinfected after every flight. When arriving in KLIA, you will be required to fill a health declaration form. Sanitize your hands upon disembarking. Walk through thermal scanners to check your temperature. Then reveal your face for passport verification. Collect your sanitized baggage and you're done. So Dan, th this video will be a really handy selling tool for agents to show their customers. Um, it will be great at, you know, for rebuilding consumer confidence. Is, is it available for them to use? And if it is, um, how, how can they get hold of it? Yeah, so absolutely it's, a, it's available to use and we've got a number of um, channels whereby agents can access content from us. Um, so we have our YouTube channel, Malaysia Airlines, um, where that can be accessed. We have our Instagram, a UK Instagram account, um, Malaysia Airlines UK, where we have content. And obviously also via MH Expert, um, there is additional content there as well. So there's, there's, there's plenty of options for um, agents to access content and the most up-to-date content that we've got via YouTube or, um, or Instagram account. And we encourage you to follow us on Instagram as well in the UK for, for, for latest updates and interesting and new content that comes through. Okay, great. So that video um, showed us what clients can expect um, from arriving and departing Kuala Lumpur as well as on board with Malaysia Airlines. Are there any current restrictions on travellers leaving the airport and entering Malaysia from the UK? I think you mentioned earlier there was a quarantine in place. Is, is there anything else that, um, that travellers should be expecting? No, so there's a, there's a quarantine in place at the moment. So it's a 14 day quarantine on arrival into Malaysia. And at present, foreign nationals are not allowed into Malaysia. At, pr at present, that is in place until the end of December. Um, although there's no guarantee at the moment that that will necessarily mean that arrivals are permitted from, from 1st of January. But I think the important thing is at the moment, like many countries with, res with restrictions on arriving passengers, these are all subject to change. Um, and, and at some point, these will get lifted. And certainly as we look forward to 2021, we can expect borders to be open and people um, being wanted to travel again. Whether people will require testing or not to enter countries you know, each country will adopt its own rules and regulations um, and that remains to be seen okay and you said passengers going on to other destinations are allowed to transit through Kuala Lumpur um, are there any additional checks that have to go through you know on the ground in the airport as they're going through that's right so we we are Kuala Lumpur International Airport permits um, transfers within the same terminal so, and, and what I mean by that is you can't transfer from the um, international terminal to the low cost carrier terminal, for example. So you can transfer from all, all of our flights between all of our flights departing from Kuala Lumpur, if, if that makes sense. The checks that will be carried out within that terminal are further temperature checks for, board, for boarding again, but nothing, nothing, nothing more than that. And obviously masks will need to be worn at all time. And they're the usual sanitizing stations and cleaning and safety protocols in, in, in Kuala Lumpur International as well. Okay, great. And speaking of traveling beyond Kuala Lumpur with Malaysia Airlines, um, what are the key destinations passengers can connect to and um, exactly how many connecting destinations do you have available in, in total? It's a, it's a great question. So we fly um, direct from Heathrow to Kuala Lumpur, um, which is our, our gateway city in, in Malaysia. From there, we've got a very extensive network domestically across Malaysia. So to the islands of, of Penang, to Langkawi, over to the jungles of Borneo, to see the, the, the orangutans, for example, but also a very extensive network to the ASEAN countries, Thailand, Indonesia, Bali, Vietnam, um, and then down to Australia and New Zealand. Now, Australia and New Zealand are rather restricted on access at the moment, but we fly to six places normally in Australia and New Zealand, um, and that's an, an extensive part of our network. We also fly to China and Japan from Kuala Lumpur. So um, a, a fairly extensive regional network out of, out of Kuala Lumpur. Okay, great. 
And how many of these routes are you operating during the pandemic? Have you cut back on some or are you still operating them all on a reduced frequency? Um, and, you know, if, if it is a reduced frequency, how, how reduced is it in comparison to what it would have been, say, in January? Yeah, so I mean, we, we've had to reduce the, the, the frequency quite significantly. Um, we are currently operating in November a weekly flight to Kuala Lumpur. Um, we're the only airline in November operating the, the service through to Kuala Lumpur. Other airlines have suspended services completely due to the UK lockdown measures. Okay. We ramp up to three services a week over the peak December period to, to Kuala Lumpur. Um, January, we dip down to two flights a week to Kuala Lumpur in, in January and February. And then from March, we're up to three um, with some very good onward connections. So uh, from, a, from a basis of onward connections and when agents are thinking about planning future trips for their clients and looking into next year, um, you know, we have a very broad range of connections and, and, and opportunities. Obviously, at the moment, the capacity is quite restricted, as it is with the majority of other carriers operating out of, out of the UK. Okay. And are you still selling seats in all Malaysia Airlines cabins on the plane? Um, and if you are, do you want to talk through the cabin options that clients will have to choose from right now? Absolutely. Ab ab absolutely. Um, so out of Heathrow, we operate the A350 aircraft, which is a lovely modern aircraft. It's only a couple of years old. And that operates with our business suite product with just four seats, highly exclusive cabin right at the very front of the aircraft. Um, we price that below an airline first class type product, um, but above an airline business class product for that exclusivity. And part of the reason we do that is many companies now don't allow first class travel in their corporate travel policies. So it's a way to offer an enhanced product for those customers who perhaps like a first class flying experience, but their companies or organizations don't allow them to sit in a, a first class cabin for travel policy. We've got our business class, our fully flat beds, um, obviously with full Wi-Fi on board, full connectivity, very, very comfortable. And then we have our economy cabin. Um, the other thing that it's worth pointing out, particularly out of London, that we do have is um, our economy plus product. So this extra leg room piece is very, very um, clever. It's not a separate cabin. We don't, we don't brand it as a separate cabin. It's just called about in, in enhanced leg room. Um, as soon as you have a separate cabin, you pay the higher air passenger duty on it. So a big part of the additional cost to sit in that cabin is higher taxation. We just charge a modest supplement for extra legroom at the front of the cabin. And again, on flights out of Heathrow, that can be available from as little as £70 each way to sit in that extra legroom seat. And um, it's proving very, very popular on, on that long flight from, from, from London. All, all of those seats are, are readily available. Agents have full access to, to sell those. Um, again, more details and images and, and pictures can be seen on the video content that we've got in our social channels or via our, via our website. Okay, great. And what about uh, meal choice on board? Um, how, how, does it how does it vary between the cabins? Um, and have you adapted the menu at all during the pandemic or are you still serving the same dishes as before? often my favorite part of a flight, eating. Um, so we've had to modify the, the meal service slightly um, but we continue to offer a full um, food and beverage service. The service in, in economy is, is, is unchanged. The service in business class used to be served um, course by course and is now served in a single serving. But the, 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 the meal options are still there. The food on board Malaysia Airlines is, is excellent um, and served with warm, warm Malaysian hospitality. And one of our signature dishes, which is really quite special, is um, fresh chicken or beef satay. Um, which is absolutely delightful and that's served uh, to, to business class and business suite passengers um, and available for, for, for pre-purchase to uh, economy passengers as well. Okay great and is there anything else that agents should know about selling Malaysia Airlines right now? Listen I mean I think it, it's not easy being an agent right now um, we, we acknowledge that and travel restrictions are, are making it difficult and uncertainty around travel restrictions is making it harder but we are very confident about the future um, and, and we know that there is pent up demand. We know that people want to travel. We are in the position that we serve some fantastic aspirational destinations. You know, the, the islands of Langkawi and, and, and Penang over to Australia, New Zealand, uh, Vietnam, Time. We've done some fantastic parts of the world um, and we're really, really looking forward to pe welcoming people on board again, people to go on holiday or to travel for, for business. So I think from an agent perspective, um, you know, be, be positive, be optimistic um, use this time 
to find out about products and destinations wisely um, and help your customers dream for the future, help them plan that, pl plan that dream trip. And I think with our, with our flex fares, if people are feeling a little uncertain about the future, you can sell our tickets in confidence, knowing that if things do change, customers will get a full refund and have the ability to, to, to make changes. And almost with some levels of reduced capacity in the market, the opportunity to lock in peak dates now for next year is absolutely critical. If you can lock in peak dates for key school holidays or key events that customers are looking to travel to, they can do that. They can lock in a price um, and have the full confidence that if things do change, they can, they can change that if they need to. Okay, great. And uh, what about um, getting more information from you about Malaysia Airlines? How, how, how can agents get in touch for, for more info? Yes, yeah, so we've, we've got a, a great um, content on, on YouTube, as we've mentioned, our uh, Malaysia Airlines YouTube channel, our Instagram account, Malaysia Airlines UK, mhexpert.co.uk, um, people can access, and then also our sales support team um, who are currently working from home at the moment, but the, the Malaysia Airlines team are, are accessible for any assistance that they may need as well. Great. So it's still there for all, all agent queries then. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we're just going to end now with a sappy one minute video um, that is hopefully going to inspire you to sell Malaysia with Malaysia Airlines. very much Dan for joining me to host this Malaysia Airlines webinar today. It really is incredible to see how airlines and other travel companies have jumped into action and adapted their processes to meet their customers needs during the pandemic. And to everyone watching, um, you can read more about and see photos from my Heathrow visits when you search TTG discovers Malaysia Airlines' new hygiene protocols on ttgmedia.com. We're also promoting a Malaysia Airlines incentive on the TTG website at the moment. So do hop over to ttgmedia.com forward slash competitions, uh, which is where you can find out how you could win a £300 Red Letter Days voucher. And please do keep an eye out on our website again for more education webinars and content. So once again, thanks so much, Dan, for joining me today. Um, and to everyone watching, take care and thanks very much for tuning in. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, everybody.